lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. I wanted to do a Math and Monday minis, or MMM, MQ, yay, on infinitesimals because one, they're super weird, and two, really interesting, and three, they pop up all the time, especially in calculus and advanced calculus. They're really useful and we can't get away from them, so we might as well understand them. Yay! Okay, so an infinitesimal is, well, it's actually a number, but I kind of think it more of like a concept because just like infinity, it's a number that's really hard to fully wrap our heads around. But what we can do is we can kind of understand the constraints and we can understand how to define it. So infinity is kind of defined as a number that's bigger than all of the other numbers. And infinitesimals are kind of the opposite direction. So it's a number that is smaller than all of the other numbers. And that's actually how they're defined explicitly. Um, I'm going to use epsilon um, to, this is an infinitesimal, um, and so it's defined to be less than all of the other real numbers. So you can kind of think of it as like, it's very, very small. How small? Smaller than everything else. Okay, cool. Um, so why should you care about infinitesimals aside from having to need to use them to do calculus? Well. So let's say we have um, a problem that no one else has done before. Let's say you're gathering data and you get a funky data curve like that, and you maybe need to find the area under this curve from here to here, because maybe let's say this was your actual data set. Well, there's no equation to calculate this, right? So what you might do is, <laughs> sorry for the multiple lines, it doesn't make it easier. There we go, one line. So what you might do is you might say, okay, well, this part right here is a rectangle. That I can do, check, thank you, prior mathematicians. But then this right here, maybe you would start to break it up into smaller chunks. Maybe this, you're like, that's kind of a rectangle. Maybe you'd be like, that's a triangle, cool. And then I have this weird lumpy part that's a semicircle, I don't know. But you could break it up into smaller pieces. Um, and that's kind of what we do with infinitesimals, but instead of using different shapes, we often kind of stick with one shape. And what you might have seen from calculus is um, these rectangles, they get teeny, 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 tiny. Cool. Okay, so let's use a more familiar example to understand what infinitesimals mean and how we actually use them to solve problems. So let's look at a circle. Circles are super weird. Cool. Okay, so that's not the center, that's really off. Okay, so let's say I'm an ancient Greek philosopher and I'm like, what is the area of a circle? We don't know, this is a really weird and surprisingly hard problem. We figured out squares and rectangles and triangles, no problem, but circles are like, this is funky. Okay, but what we can do is we can measure the circumference and so I'm like, cool, I'm coming along and people are like, we know the circumference is two pi r. All right, we're starting from that. So let's say that I'm like, well, maybe I can't find the area of the circle, but I can find the area of a bunch of teeny, teeny, tiny triangles. So I draw the smallest triangle that I can so that its bottom is effectively as flat as possible. I'm going to call the bottom D. Actually, let's call it epsilon to stick with our notation. And the, the radius, sorry, is R. And so I want to zoom into this a little bit. So so you might be saying, okay, well, aren't we ignoring some of the area here? I'm going to use red to be like, yeah, maybe there's a tiny bit of area. But the beauty of infinitesimals is that we can make them, theoretically, as small as possible. So the smaller our triangle gets, the less that area is. And if we can make our triangle as small as possible, it's actually, we're not really ignoring anything. But that's a lot of triangles. So it's really hard for me to draw that, so I'm just going to draw it in a way that enables me to draw it and comprehend with the recognition that that is theoretically how small I want the base of my triangle to be. Okay, cool. So we have one triangle, and then I just draw a ton, and maybe um, I could cut these out. That would take forever. I could count them up. That would also take forever. Um, but so we know the area of the triangle is one half base times height. And in this case, the base is epsilon and the height is the radius. So one half epsilon times the radius. And I know that the area of my circle 
is going to be the sum of all of the triangle areas um, over n triangles, which is going to be one half epsilon r times the number of triangles. Well, how many triangles are there? Do I really have to sit there and cut out all these teeny tiny triangles? <gasps> no, let's be lazy and let's think about it. So if we were laying a f uh, if we were laying fence across a 25 meter length um, on our yard or something like that, let's say we wanted to prevent the little bunnies from eating our vegetables or our flowers because they also like flowers. And I have lengths of fencing in five feet, five, oh wait, sorry, five meter lengths of fencing. Oh, it's classic American. Let me mix the units. Um, <laughs> good times. So five meter lengths of fencing. How many of these lengths of fencing do I need? Well, total length of 25 meters divided by five meters of fence. Um, so the number of fencing things equals five. 25 divided by five. Boom. So we need to know the length over which we're going and how long our chunks are. Same exact thing here. So you could, uh, the length that we're going is the circumference. So this is two pi r. That's the length that our triangles are traveling around. And the number is epsilon because it has a distance of epsilon. So for every triangle, it covers a distance of um, epsilon. And so the number of triangles that we need is the circumference, two pi r, the distance we're going, divided by the length at which we are able to travel um, for each of those steps. Okay, so then we plug this in. Uh-oh. Okay. So we'll do that in parentheses. And then what we get is, can you all see that? Okay, I think that's okay. Then what we get is one half epsilon times r times two pi r over epsilon. This is getting really, really small. So what I'm gonna do is write it over here. So the area of our circle, the epsilons cancel, boom. Uh, two divided by one half also cancels. So we end up with pi r squared. Woo! Q-E-D, as they say, which is super, super cool. So the beauty of this is that even if we can't really ask, like, what does it mean to be infinitely small? That's okay. We can still use it and apply it to solve hard problems. Yay! All right, let me know if you have any questions on infinitesimals. I hope that this helps. And uh, please reach out if you have any other types of math topics that you'd like me to do a video on. Yay. All right, go forth and math all the things. Bye.